All right, I'm back again with the next part of the Oxford Pat from 2015. So we've got question 17 we're on to now. A small boat floats on the sea. It encounters waves of this format, okay, where A, uh, where Y as a function of X and T is the height of the wave at position X times T. Right, okay, K and omega are constants. The waves have a wavelength of 10 metres, amplitude 0.5 metres, travel at a horizontal speed of 2 metres per second. What's the maximum vertical velocity of the boat? Right, OK, well, let's do this in. Well, shall I, I'll answer the question as you would do if you understand what this equation means. And then afterwards, I'll unpick this a little bit because some people uh, sometimes people get confused by what this actually is. So in this case, we'll be looking at well, we want the frequency of the wave so we know that our frequency is going to be the velocity divided by the wavelength so that is 2 divided by 10 so that's given us 0.2 hertz for the frequency we know because we want the rate of change of y with respect to time we want to maximize that so we want to do dy dt so y dot is going to be minus omega a cos kx minus omega t. That's just differentiating our function with respect to time. So our maximum vertical velocity, maximum velocity is going to be equal to omega a. We know that a is 0.5. So all we need to do now, so omega, so we need to do 2 pi f times a half. That's going to be our maximum velocity. So it's going to be pi divided by 5 meters per second. Right, so why are we able to do all of that is the question. You know, why, I mean, I suppose the, the thing which is probably going to cause people the most issue is why are we just able to differentiate with respect to time here and ignore the x? If y is a function of position and time, what exactly is going on? Right. So let's take a closer look at this function then. If we were just going to draw out the first bit, let's ignore the time bit. So say we had y was just a function of position and not of time. So y was a sine kx. If we were going to draw that out, we've done a double transformation of a sine wave here. We've done a stretch in the y direction multiplied by a and then a stretch in the x direction multiplied by 1 over k. So that's fine. We've now got our new sine wave here, which is going between a and minus a. And it's cutting through here every pi divided by k. So that's our two transformations. So that is if we just did y as a function of x. So this is the height of the wave with distance so the wave is fixed in this case it's like we've we've the the c has just solidified into this position of a wave the wave isn't actually propagated in order to get the wave to propagate we need to be shifting things in the x direction and we can't just do a single shift in the x direction you know we can't just say okay well let's put in some constant there because all we're doing is moving that then off to the right or the left depending on the value of omega but i suppose if omega is positive we moved it off to the right but it'd still be fixed we need it to be time varying in order to propagate the wave so let's multiply that by t and now we've got the wave propagating so it's going to be changing it's like we've put this into motion we've now set it off and it's moving so we've got a couple of things that are now happening you know, we want to get the maximum velocity in the y direction. So if we fix x and we say, well, for a particular x, what is happening to this point here? Where well, it's going to go up and then down. I mean, we're just getting SHM uh, about this point, essentially what's happening there. <clears throat> so and we could do this with any point. They're all going to be moving in exactly the same way, just with a phase shift on them. So. That's what we're doing with this. And that's why when we're differentiating y, we can say, well, for some fixed x, let's differentiate y as a function of time. And it will be fine because it doesn't matter what x is. It doesn't matter what x we pick. It's going to be completely independent of that, which is what we can see when we differentiate it with respect to t. 
there's no x coming out here the velocity that we've got our maximum velocity for y does not depend on x the velocity that we get at a particular time will depend on x because the time determines how far the wave has moved off to the right and then x will determine what velocity we've got depending on how far we've moved it off to the right but if we don't care about any of that and we're just looking for the maximum well it doesn't matter what x we've got and that's why there's no x in this bit it's just a minus omega a so that's why we can differentiate just with respect to time and leave the x out and we're just looking at that yeah we take the maximum bit and we've got our omega a so yeah uh, hopefully that makes it a little bit clearer what's going on with all of these features here that we can see yeah this is our amplitude this is our rescaling of the x-axis and that is our setting the wave in motion so they're, they're quite nice functions when you get to grips with them of, of how they actually work these wave functions right pushing on We've got a garden hose cross-sectional area A ejecting water at a rate of X, which is metre cube per second. OK, what's the speed of the water leaving the nozzle? Right. So what have we got going on here? So that's our A. In one second, we would have moved V metres worth of water through if it's moving at velocity V, because, of course, if it's moving at velocity V, in one second it moves v meters so that's going to be our volume so x is going to be equal to a times v so v is uh, x over a so that's that's all good uh, yeah that works so again doing a unit check on these just to make sure so we want meters per second for v and we've got meters cubed per second divided by meters squared so that's fine now the wall, the water hits a wall close to the end of the garden hose. So I say it's coming out this way, it goes whap into a wall perpendicular to the direction of flow. What is the force on the wall if the water falls to the ground when it hits the wall or when it rebounds horizontally? OK, well, we know that the second one's going to be double the first one because we've got double the momentum change. So the second part is straightforward. Oh, and they're telling us to use density in our answer. So we'll have more unit analysis probably going on here. So our force is going to be the rate of change of our momentum. So that will be M delta V over delta T. So we want the mass per second multiplied by the change in the velocity. Right, so what mass have we got on all of this? Well, mass per second is going to be our volume per second multiplied by the density so that's going to be volume per second multiplied by density that's our mass per second and then we need to multiply that by our delta v which is going to be the same as v which would be x over a so our force is going to be rho x squared over a so that's for the first part and then as i say well the second part must be double that because we've got a double change in the momentum. So, yeah, it's just going to be two times that. Right, so that's fine. Unit analysis helps on some of these. If you start getting a little bit muddled, it can be easy to lose track of what all these things are. It can turn a bit faceless. So doing a double check on unit analysis isn't a bad idea. All right, question 19. We've got to consider a circular orbit radius R around the Earth. If the Earth's mass is m, radius, capital R, that's our big G. Derive an expression for the speed that's required for a stable orbit. Right, so we're just doing circular motion, standard stuff. So our force, which is g m m over little r squared, because that's the orbit radius, is m v squared over r. Get rid of some m's, get rid of an r on each side. And that leaves us with that V is the square root of G capital M over little r. Assuming that the radius of the Earth is 6,400 kilometres and the gravitational acceleration G at the surface is 10, calculate the speed required for a stable orbit around the equator at sea level. Right, OK, so they've given this, this uh, our standard local acceleration due to gravity. So now if we're doing F equals MA on this, 
which is what we were doing here. That is F equals MA. But now our MA is MG, is MV squared over capital R, because we're now at that radius. Get rid of those. So we've got that V squared is going to be 64000 kilometers. Well, actually, well, we have to square root this first of all, don't we? So that's going to be, well, let's put the meters in. So we've got all of that. So that's now in meters. So what is that? 64 times 10 to the 6. So 8 times 10 to the 3. So 8,000 meters per second. No, that's fine. OK. Um, what physical reasons make it difficult for a satellite to maintain a circular orbit around the equator at sea level? Well, it might hit things. Uh, yeah, it might hit a mountain. There we go. Hit mountains. There's got to be one somewhere, isn't there? If you're just going around at sea level, you will just hit a cliff somewhere, wouldn't you? So, yeah, a bit of a weird one to finish off. But there you go. That's uh, that's another another question, a standard circular motion question, really. Not that much. It's quite easy marks on that one. Question 20. The energy levels of hydrogen. OK, this looks fun. Are given by that expression where R is this constant that I've never heard of. N is some integer, right? Neutral hydrogen atoms are excited to a state with N equals 10. The atoms then de-excite, emitting light before settling to the ground state N is 1. What's the shortest wavelength of light emitted? Right, well, our shortest wavelength is going to be highest energy. So short wavelength implies high energy, which means we want our biggest transition. So that's going to be, well, it's HF. There we go. They're telling us to put it in terms of Planck's constant. So our HF is going to be, well, that's HC over lambda. So that is going to be equal if we're going from, what, 10 down to 1. So we need to go the difference between the two of them. So the 1, 1 will become positive. So it's R over 1 squared minus R over 10 squared. So we got R minus a hundredth of R. So that's 99 R over 100. So what do we want? We want the wavelength. So the wavelength is going to be 100 HC divided by 99 R. So the longest wavelength is then going to be if we've just dropped down from 10 to 9. So in this case, so long wavelength implies low E, which means our HC over lambda is going to be R over 9 squared minus R over 10 squared. I'm going to run out of space on all of this. So what is that going to end up being? Now we're going to get this over the same thing. So we need to get everything over 8100. 8,100, wasn't it? So, well, I don't know. Let's not rush that. I was thinking that might be cancelling numbers. I'm not going to be able to cancel. So we've got R times, I need more space. I'm going to have to scroll down because I'm running into the previous answer. All right, let's take that down here. So we're going to have R, 1 over 81 minus 1 over 100. So that's going to be. So we put it all over that. So we're going to have 100 minus 81. So we've got 19 over 8100 R. That is our HC over lambda. So now our lambda is equal to 8100 HC over 19 R. Right, so it's certainly longer. Right, and now we want, well, how many emission lines may be observed? Right, so how many emissions? So we've got these 10. So we can do, what can we do? 10 to 9 to 8 to 7 to down to 1. And then 9, all right, so we're going to have 9 plus 8 plus 7 plus da, 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 down to 1. So we need the ninth triangular number, which is 9 times 10 over 2, which is equal to 45. 
Right, that wasn't too bad. I mean, they're, they're, they like throwing these ones in. I don't mind these questions, actually, where they're trying to sort of confuse you a little bit by giving you stuff you've never seen before. I mean, who cares what this thing is called? It doesn't really come into it particularly at all. We just leave it in the answer. So we don't uh, we don't really care about that at all. Um, so, yeah, I don't mind these. And you get a decent amount of marks when they're throwing these curveballs at you. Uh, we, I think that might be a good place to stop on this video as well. I've done another few questions. I don't know. Maybe we've still got left, but let's leave it there on this one.